You're listening to the Chad HD Show On Demand. Good for you. Now download the KFYO app and listen live weekday afternoons, 5 to 7 p.m. Central. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Filling in today for Chad Hasty, it's cotton industry expert Steve Evans. To the Chad Hasty Show. Steve Evans in for Chad this evening. And we just found out breaking news. You heard it right here. Chad's not going to make it back for tomorrow. We told you it might happen. I got a phone call. He said, man, Vegas flight's late already. And uh, that Dallas connection is just not going to happen. <laughs> so I imagine uh, Chad will be uh, spending uh, the evening with uh, family in Dallas. He's from Dallas. And we'll be back on with you tomorrow as he uh, uh, rearranges and uh, reschedules some flights and makes it home. So he'll be back Wednesday. So uh, Nick and me uh, will hang out with you tomorrow. Super Bowl. Man, did you watch it? (laughs) What an exciting Super Bowl at the end. It was boring. I thought I fell asleep at one point. I just couldn't stand it. I fell asleep. For for those that are asking me what I'm smoking, <laughs> the other side, what are you smoking? I'm smoking a Papas Fritas, a Liga Papas Fritas. I love these things. My my go to. They're, they're short enough. Sometimes I can. It, it depends on smoking a cigar while you're doing radio is hard because you you know you you, you got to talk so you end up relighting it every commercial <laughs> i know ken corbin's listening and he's got the same problem you end up relighting it and uh sometimes they'll last uh they'll last a, a, a whole show and sometimes i can burn through one in an hour it just depends on how hard i smoke it anyway um super bowl was interesting i fell asleep during the first half there just wasn't anything going on San Francisco was moving the ball pretty well, and, you know, they really were. It looked like the Chiefs were kind of sitting down. If anything, in the first half, San Francisco's offense is what screwed it up. The Chiefs' defense just couldn't seem to connect with anything until later. And then, of course, in overtime, they really turned it on. It was exciting. The last half of the game was great. And then, of course, uh, Taylor's boyfriend steals the show at the end. He's got to sing Viva Las Vegas on the stage. <laughs> but you watch it for the commercial. So I'm interested. What? Uh, and I didn't see them all. Again, I, I took a nap for the first half. I got bored. Fell asleep. Plus, I, I, I hit the easy button yesterday. There's, uh, if you're in the Lubbock area, there's uh, Fajita Pete's. They're not paying us to advertise, but Fajita Pete's over in Milwaukee has got probably the best, best family value in town. You can get a great big old family pack of fajitas, uh, and it will feed, it'll feed six people. They say it feeds two adults and like four kids. But uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's everything you need for 100 bucks. And then they were running a special. And that you can go in there and uh, you order it on the Toast app, and you can set what time you want to pick it up. So I had it all ready to go. Uh, at uh, 5 o'clock, swung in there, grabbed my 40 pounds of food, and uh, went back to the house. We were full on fajitas. They didn't cook anything. It was not a normal Super Bowl. They didn't cook a thing. They didn't, no, no poppers, no uh, wings, none of that. Just fajitas, good fajitas. I had them again for lunch today. So works out. It's a great deal. But anyway, you watch half the people watch the Super Bowl for the commercials, right? And you watch the Super Bowl for the commercials. And I didn't see them all. I'm still kind of going through. I missed a bunch of them. 
because again I was kind of dozing off, and then it seemed like, you know, of course during uh, later in the game and in, into overtime they were just recirculating, recycling commercials. But there was one weird commercial. Did you catch this one? If I can get it to play. <laughs> So catchy. Makes you want to stand up and march. A man who's old enough to know. And young enough to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. American Value 2024 is responsible for the content of this advertisement. Except, oops. <laughs> he upset a few people. Oh, he had to apologize to members of his family for the surprise Super Bowl ad that heavily featured his connection to his uncle, former President John F. Kennedy. He argued that the group responsible for the ad, American Value Super PAC, did not consult with him or his campaign before making a massive, major, very expensive Super Bowl buy. I kind of find it hard to believe. He didn't, he didn't consult with him before they made the ad. RFK Jr. is running for president as an independence. Nevertheless, pin the video to the top of his profile on X. <gasps> his cousin Bobby Shriver first complained about the ad in a post uh, last night, writing that his uncles and mother would have never approved of Jr.'s uh, deadly health care views. My cousin Super Bowl ad used our uncle's faces and my mother's. She would be appalled by his death, his deadly health care views. Respect for science, vaccines, and health care equity were in her DNA. She strongly supported my health care work, which he opposes. Oh, on Twitter. X, by the way. It's, it's, still, it's Twitter. Why do you have to say X, formerly known as Twitter? You know? Why did they, what, did, what was he thinking renaming it? X just doesn't sound on X, and half the people don't know what you're talking about until you say Twitter. Bobby, I'm so sorry if that advertisement caused you pain. The ad was created and aired by the American Value Super PAC without any involvement or approvals from my campaign. Federal rules prohibit Super PACs from consulting with me or my staff. I send you and your... But, but yet he said they didn't consult with me, and that was excuse, and then turns around and says they can't, and they can't. They're not supposed to have any communication. I send uh, you and your family my sincerest apologies. God bless you, RFK Jr. replied. He followed up, at, uh, followed, followed up the statement with a more general apology to any of his family members who were hurt by the ad, stating once again that FEC rules prohibit super PACs from consulting with me or my staff. It was done on purpose. American Values 24 ran the 30-second ad for $7 million. The clip is a throwback to an ad used by his uncle in the 1960 presidential campaign. The ad replacing JFK's face, it would have made me mad too if I were his family, with that of RFK Jr. implores viewers to vote independent. But not for that independent. <laughs> the panicked D.C. power brokers are working overtime to keep Kennedy off the ballot because they know he can and will in their culture of greed and corruption. American Values 2024 co-founder Tony Lyons said in a statement provided to Fox News, they offer us soaring inflation, forever wars, chronic disease. RFK Jr. Officers real, offers us real change along with freedom, trust, and hope. Like his uncle and his father, Kennedy is a corruption fighter. And it's no wonder the DNC is trying every old trick and inventing new tricks to stop him. The public sees through all of it and won't stand for it. It's funny. Kennedy initially sought to challenge Biden in the 24 Democratic presidential primary, but the DNC said it would not hold primary debates and stood behind the incumbent president. Stupid, but they just didn't like him. If Michelle Obama stood up and said she was going to challenge Biden, they'd have been all over it. He declared himself as an independent candidate in October and has seen support in polls from a sizable number of Democrats, even some Republicans. Probably the never Trump Republicans. Anyway, interesting ad. What was your favorite ad or favorite moment of the Super Bowl? If you watched it, a lot of people just didn't watch it. There's still there's still a lot of people out there that that uh, can't that won't come back to the NFL because of the kneeling incidents, kneeling during the national anthem. I didn't see any of that yesterday. I don't think that stuff stands uh, uh, goes uh, very well anymore. But a lot of interesting commercials. It seemed like T-Mobile kind of stole the show. And what was the new home? Uh, the home search, the homes, whatever. That, that's they. There's no telling how much money they spent. 
on something that I haven't heard of before. Out researching, uh, flying around in the helicopter, researching neighborhoods. It was kind of interesting. But it wasn't interesting enough for me to go look at it. And then another controversial ad, uh, and I've got to look up the um, look up the website now. It's uh, interesting, but it's the one where uh, it portrayed people washing each other's feet. Uh, let's see, what was the name of that website? Nick, did you catch that? Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness, I can't. Uh, he gets us. So he gets us. The organization. Oh my goodness, that that sparked more controversy than anything. There's there's Twitter wars going on. There's Facebook wars going on about He Gets Us, and that's another one I haven't had time to go look up today and see what they're about, but it seemed kind of odd. Some people writing that it, 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 it offended them. But I don't know. I'm not quick to pass judgment because I don't know anything about the organization, but, you know, there was, it was a little bit odd. It did seem kind of out of place. I couldn't put my finger on it. Anyway, lots you could you could text us about, 806-680-2790. Let's go ahead and fire off the break. More to come on the show. It's a Chad Hasty show right here on the Texas Town Square Media Network. Steve Evans hanging out with you this afternoon. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock, News Talk 940 in Amarillo, News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene, and in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Tuesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show, cleanup on aisle Biden continues the Democrat media trying to convince you that Biden isn't too old for the job. Plus, Clay? We'll continue to count down a little bit over nine months away. Is Biden actually going to be the guy as all of Buck's brains are getting scrambled? Michelle Obama talk continues. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton tomorrow morning at 11. Welcome back to the Chad HD Show. Steve Evans hanging out with you. 806-680-2790. Uh, Ruckus says, I heard they played the black anthem before the real national anthem. I didn't catch it if they did. I don't know, Nick. Did you catch it? Did they? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of walked back around in the room when Reba was um, really, you know, these people singing the national, just sing it the way it was written. We don't have to really go overboard. <laughs> we don't have to do that. We can just uh, we can just sing it the way it was intended. Yeah, I po- heard him introduce Post Malone. Was that it? I heard it from. I was in the kitchen. I heard it. I didn't catch quite catch it, and then I walked across the house. I don't know what he sang. I don't know. Was that what he was? I'll look it up at the break. So, I wasn't going to talk about this today. I was going to leave it alone because I lived it all weekend. But I just got too many too many messages about it today. Too many people asking me about it. The House GO, the Texas GOP censuring House Speaker Dade Phelan. And I was going to leave it alone because I didn't want to go on a diatribe about why I abstained in the vote. Because I got some people mad at me over it. But now, because I have people upset at me, I feel like I need to explain myself. And since I've got an opportunity, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what the censure does. Is what it, what it ultimately does is they have to be under the state GOP rules. And mind you, the rules are established by the delegates at convention every two years. SREC, the State Republican Executive Committee that I'm a member of, is bound by the rules the delegate sets for us. They decide how we operate the party under their rules, and then we operate under a set of bylaws, too. So for these censures to happen, they have to start by someone who is a a voter for that elected official. Lubbock County can't censure Dade Feelings. We don't vote for him. 
So there was one in Orange County, one in Jasper County, and they, they go through a process that they have to be voted on by their county executive committee. And then they can ask that they come up to the state party to impose some penalties. And one of those penalties basically says is the party can expend up to 12% of its campaign funds against that candidate. They can actively go out and campaign against that candidate. Now, there's interpretations on this rule, and one of them is is that the SREC and a convention can't do this, can't bring it before the SREC after the primary filing period's begun, after you can go apply to be on the primary ballot for a place and file an application. you got to do it all before. And there's spreadsheets out there and PowerPoints and video and explaining why this rule is interpreted this way and the textualist explaining that there should be commas here and there's not commas there. And, but I am a, I'm a plain language individual. And I'm not the only. I'm a, I'm a professional registered parliamentarian and I consulted two other parliamentarians and two attorneys on this prior to this happening and all agreed the rule was clear this shouldn't have happened. Even deeper than that, I was in the room at the conventions when these rules were being debated, and it was the intent of the delegates crafting those rules that the state party, they didn't want the state party, the state Republican Executive Committee, interfering in primaries once they'd begun. There's a very good reason for this. Suppose you go down to your local county Republican Party and you apply for a place on the ballot and you've got an opponent, and the party decides that they don't like you, and they're just going to go out and actively campaign for you. What if it's a commissioner race? Say just a local commissioner race, and the party just says, you know what, we're just going to go out and start doing campaign ads for this other guy because we don't like this one. But yet we took your filing fee. We're the primary filing authority conducting the election. But we've decided we don't like you, so we're going to go out and actively campaign against you. This is the exact same thing. The state party in a multi-county race, such as Speaker Dade Phelan, his his county, his uh, house district, spans multiple counties. He applies at the state party. He goes to the state GOP. He applies with Matt Rinaldi, the state GOP chairman. He hands his money, his application fee, over. And now that's the filing authority. They're conducting the election. And now the party can use up to 12%. Plus, it wouldn't surprise me if other organizations didn't do what they call pass-through money. I'll give you $50,000 if you go out and run ads for me on it and put the party's logo on it. Now, regardless of how you feel about Dade Phelan, we are the party of law and order, the rule of law. We obey our rules. We obey our laws. We sit back and scream and holler when Donald Trump doesn't get treated right, when they use the laws against us. This is one of the principal things that makes us Republicans versus Democrats. Democrats don't care about the rules. They don't care about the laws. That's why they're so much different. They don't have morals. They don't have ethics. They don't care. They'll play dirty. And now all of a sudden, we can scream rule of law, but break our own rules. And we did it by saying, I don't think the rule says that. But the rule was challenged. The validity of the, of the center was challenged. And ultimately, the challenge failed, and it went forward. But I believe, I chair the Rules Committee. It's our job to interpret those. I had the intent of what was intended by the people that drafted and and crafted those rules at convention. And so I couldn't in good conscience cast a vote because casting a vote would say, I agree that it's valid, and I don't. I don't for one second agree it's valid, so I abstained. And that's the reason. Now, you may think it's, uh, it's, it's fine. There's people that are starting to, starting to say, well, it's okay if we bend the rules. We're going to have to fight and play dirty. I'm not ready for that. 
I still think that we're a party that has rules that need to be respected. We have laws, and that's what separates us. I don't, I don't want to be in a party that doesn't respect the rule of law. That's why I chose this one. I believe it matters. And some people think it's petty. Oh, it's just petty. Just vote on it. It's okay. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to compromise the way I feel about it. I have an obligation to advise those that I'm working with on my interpretation of it. And that's what it, and I stayed true to it. Some people did. Some people didn't. But I won't apologize for that. So the censure happened. It went through 55 with four no's, four abstentions. And so in the end, it didn't change a thing. And will it actually matter? I don't know. Because a whole lot of, whole lot of advertising could get thrown into that campaign right before early voting. It seemed just kind of convenient for me that it happened that way. But I'm always happy to answer for the way I vote and conduct myself. 806-680-2790. Your thoughts and more. Time for news and weather. Back with more in a moment. Call in to The Chad Hasty Show at 1-800-687-0790. The Chad Hasty Show, broadcasting on the Texas Town Square Media Network. To battle is to fight, to struggle, to overcome, and ultimately for the Marine Corps, it means to win. There is no alternative. It's not just a statement of intent. It's a promise to our nation, a promise kept for more than two centuries, a promise of the Marines. Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. You can always find people who are helping. Thank you to all the first responders who put their lives in danger to help us when my brothers and sisters need them. We look out for the helpers because they look out for us. Help us help first responders in your community today. Go to firstrcf.org to learn more. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Chad Hasty talking the news at the start, middle, and end of your drive home, and when news breaks. This is the Chad Hasty Show. Hey, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. Steve Evans hanging out with you this evening. We get to a couple of texts. Let's see, 401. Uh,. Steve, that is what uh, squids are known for. <laughs> squids are known. We can tick people off. We can tick off the Pope. <laughs> yeah, we sure can. 786, we had a Super Bowl party, decided to mute the Black National Anthem. We have uh, one country, one national anthem. We refuse to participate on the destruction of our country's identity. Biden is already trying to destroy that by allowing millions of illegal aliens who don't recognize our country's values. Thank you for that. Another one here. Uh, I got more to unpack. That's a link, Kim. I don't, I don't do links. Uh, so, um, we'll, I'll, I'll move that over to another machine here in a little bit. I don't know. Is is that the Black National Anthem? Is America the Beautiful? Is that it? Is it? Has it been just reappropriated? I mean, it's a Ray Charles song. We've grew up with it. Is that now? I thought it was. Uh, Thought it was odd they introduced a singer before Reba McIntyre. I didn't realize that's what he was singing. Again, I walked off. <laughs> I don't think Reba McIntyre. I, you know, love her to death, but we don't have to. We don't have to get crazy with the national anthem. <laughs> Lift every voice. I don't know what that is, Nick. That's the Black National Anthem, but that's not what Post Malone sang. He sang "America the Beautiful." I don't know. 
somebody educate me on this. So, um, uh, I guess I'm I'm living in a cave because I don't uh, I don't I don't pay attention to that. I pay attention to the national anthem. The national anthem is the national anthem. Well, something else I got asked about quite a bit while I was uh, uh, yeah I'll look at that in a little bit, Nick. Something else I got asked about. I continually get asked about, but I got asked about it more than once this weekend, so it seems like it's a deal. This, the campaign ads flying around in the House District 83 campaign with uh, Dustin Burroughs and Wade Cowan, and one of them is is the list. Of course, there was a campaign mailer, I think Wade Cowan sent out, that talks about the list. Dustin Burroughs made a list, a hit list. And it, 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 seems, like, it seems like this was put to bed already. And now we're here we are talking about it again. And so I had uh, the, the, the last person that asked me about it was at an event where they heard Representative Burroughs speak and said, you know, I wanted to ask about the list, but it wasn't, just really wasn't the appropriate time. I couldn't, you know, I just, so I didn't. And asked me about it, said I would love for him to explain the list. Well, I mean, this, was, this, is, this is an old thing. And what's interesting about it, this happened back in, in August of 19, to the best of my recollection. Because there was a recording and audio, a lot of you remember this, and I happened to be in Austin about the time they were allowing people to listen to the audio, and I went, I went over, and it was during the, the campaign training seminars that happened in late summer before we get ready for the primary when I went and uh, listened to this audio. And of course, I was told what I was going to be hearing before I got to listen to it. But we go back to this list, and I'm not going to go back through this whole thing. But here's my answer to the list, because I know exactly what it was. The list was a list of people that would not jump on board with taxpayer-funded lobbying, with the bill prohibiting it. If you don't know what this is, this is money that's given to Texas Municipal League, Texas Association of Counties, and if you don't know what those are, they're the big conglomerates that all the the cities and counties want to be members of. They're all liberal organizations that want to advise the counties they offer they offer legal advice they offer health insurance a whole range of benefits your taxpayer dollars pay for the memberships to those organizations by the way and they love to advise county commissioners they love to advise city council and mayors on how to do things they have their their lobbying organizations And then oftentimes cities and counties hire lobbyists to go lobby against you. Every time there's a bill that goes through goes through Austin that helps you, that limits your property taxes, that keeps more money in your pocket, I guarantee you one of these organizations or cities in the state of Texas is paying someone to go lobby against you. We've had past county commissioners in Lubbock County go to Austin and testify against bills that were going to put more money back in your pocket. And the effort in 2019 was to stop it. And the list was comprised of people that didn't want to get on board with that. And I don't have a single problem with the list. And then, well, you know, he had to resign as the, as the chairman of the, caucus, of the House Republican Caucus. You bet he did. Because even after it all happened, he realized that this was something he was going to have to go alone. He couldn't sit as the chairman of the House Republican Caucus and go on the crusade to call out other members. So he did the responsible thing. He resigned it and stayed on the quest to fight against taxpayer-funded lobbying. And that's all this was. The recording and all that was, was hyped up, whatever. That's how we found out about it. But the fact of the matter is, that's the list. And what's happening here is we've got a lot of energy. It's a lot of Trump energy. People that are now paying attention, I'm glad you're here. More people need to pay attention to what's going on. But people who are new to politics and new to the fight and new to the political arena don't know the things that happened in 2019, just, you know, in recent history. And those are being brought back to the surface. He, he, there's been two sessions have happened. Representative Burroughs has gone to the has gone back to for two more sessions since all that happened. He's answered for it on a number of ca- of occasions. But these are just supposed to to spark outrage. Instead of running on 
what how you're going to be effective and what you're going to do we're running on i just hate him and so i'm the better candidate you should hate him too yeah i'm going to defend him because i went and listened to all this i saw this happen and it was a witch hunt and now it's being brought back up and it kind of infuriates me that i've got people that um, I, I, th- I thought we did a good, ga- a good job of, of disseminating this information. I, th- I, you know, I thought most people know, knew. And now it's coming back around from people that I thought already knew was happening because it's being stirred back up again. It's just used as campaign fodder, crammed in a cannon to say, you should hate this individual simply because of this. Well, that's the truth about it. That's all the list was. And it's people that if you were living, paying attention, if you were living during the session, uh, most of us that care were living during the session. If you saw this unfolding, when it did, you were furious with that same list too because that bill was an important piece of legislation that didn't happen. You still can't get enough people to really end taxpayer-funded lobbying. You still have your elected officials in your city and, and county government either contracting or going to Austin to lobby for things that are against you. And they use your money to do it. And that ought to infuriate you. The list should have made you mad. But you didn't know about it. I'm off my soapbox. I don't know. It just it, it, that, that, that wound me up. Because it just seems like... Let's talk about the issues that are, that are in front of us right now. Let's, let's rehashing things that happened in the past that have been disposed of. It's, if you want to make the argument, we've made the argument with Ken Paxton that he got elected. He got elected, and so the article of, of impeachment, it's, it's the same group that's wound up about this, the same individuals that are mad have, have made that same argument to me about Ken Paxton. Representative Burroughs has been elected twice gone back, the people have sent him back to two more sessions since that, since that happened. Does the same thing not apply? The same grace doesn't apply? This is what I'm talking about, about, about how we obey our rules, our ethics, and our morals. We seem to be cherry-picking the ones that suit us. And I, this is not anything new. But instead of new people coming in that are paying attention to what's going on, they're voting, they're getting out, they're working in the field, they're energizing other voters, and we're misinforming somebody that's new and creating outrage where there doesn't need to be any. My advice to you is get out and listen to these candidates, engage with them. And I'm not just saying this race in particular. All of them. I've always encouraged you to be an informed voter, and if you're going to cast a vote, make sure you know something about the person. I don't vote in races that I haven't done my homework. I know, I I just abstain. See that word, abstain? I just don't. If I, I'm not going to pick someone that has, and, and see, listen, campaigns count on that. They count on an uninformed voter going in and picking someone who's, who's on the first on the list, it's the, the, the top of the ballot draw order, someone who's, Sometimes male or female, you know, there's, there's statistics that we do that says we'll get X amount of percentage of the vote just because of this, because an uninformed voter will vote anyway. If you don't know, don't vote. But I encourage you to show up to the candidate forums that happen all over the place, the debates that happen, listen to things. Most of these candidates you can get in touch with. You can contact them. You can call their offices or their email their their campaign flyer where whatever their campaign email is and they'll tell you where they're going to appear there's there's groups all over town that host all of these candidates they want to get out there they want to speak their message they want to tell you what they're about that is what you you look at look at the campaign ads that hash up something that's just it's just there to to create misinformation it kind of angers me because we can't just tell the truth anymore, can we? We can't just operate on the truth. I guarantee you, you walk up to Representative Burroughs and you ask him a question point blank, and he'll tell you. He'll give you the answer. You might not like it, and you might not agree with him, and you get to do that. I don't always agree with him, and I tell him when I, I, I disagree with him. He does the same. But we have a civil dialogue. 
But the misinformation drives me crazy because it, it's it's it, and oftentimes it's people that just they don't want to ask, but it impacts their vote later. It was never explained to them. Don't let your question go unanswered. Chad Hasty, he'll answer it. Throw it in on the text line. He'll answer it, tell you where to go. He'll get the person on and interview them and ask them that very question in a very fair way. Anyway, we're way past time to take a break. Let's go ahead and fire that off, Nick. I'm off my soapbox. We'll pick up something else after the break. Steve Evans hanging out with you on the Chad Hasty Show. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Tuesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show, cleanup on aisle Biden continues the Democrat media trying to convince you that Biden isn't too old for the job. Plus, Clay? We'll continue to count down a little bit over nine months away. Is Biden actually going to be the guy as all of Buck's brains are getting scrambled? Michelle Obama talk continues. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, tomorrow morning at 11. I answered the call. Together, we fought for our nation and its people. And even though I no longer wear the uniform, I am still a Marine. My service has come full circle. I will continue to support my country and my community. Then and now, Semper Fidelis remains my promise. Always faithful, always Marine. Hey, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show, 806-680-2790. If you're trying to call the text line, it, it doesn't work that way. We don't listen to it, but it like translated a message. I got a message from 786 that said, hello, would you tell your guy that's on the radio at 540 that the Star Spangled Banner is our national anthem, not America the Beautiful? Before he talks on the radio, he needs to do some research if he doesn't even know our national anthem. Hello, <laughs> messenger. Do some research and figure out who I am. <laughs> I'm a combat vet. I know what the national anthem is. I know it's not America the Beautiful. And I know that they played the national anthem last night at the Super Bowl because even when I'm home, I stand up to attention to listen to it. But thank you. What I didn't listen to was I didn't listen to the America the Beautiful thing. I didn't, and I, I don't believe this is the, the black national anthem. Evidently, I didn't know what it was, this lift every voice thing. And from what I can tell is it was played. I guess it just wasn't aired. I, I don't know. I didn't know it was played. But thank you. I know what the national anthem is. I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> don't ask. 778, I got laid in, uh, in late on your Burroughs thing. Where can I hear this again? Uh, you can go to KFYO, find uh, Chad Hasty Show, The On Air, and you can listen to the podcast. Nick has them up 30 to 40 minutes uh, or so after we get off the air, sometimes a little bit longer. You can actually go to Apple Podcast and uh, subscribe to it. It'll tell you when there's a new episode. Sorry, my chair. <laughs> my chair decided it was just going to go to the floor. <laughs> a little, little cylinder said, you're going to the floor. I couldn't reach the microphone anymore. <laughs> Sorry about that. You almost heard a crash. It's about to come out of it. This, uh, now, so evidently, just looking at some videos, this Andra Day sings this uh, Lift Every Voice song. I don't know. It's, I guess it played, I don't know, Nick, did you hear it? I didn't either. I didn't know they did it. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> we beat that to death. Trump asked the Supreme Court to extend. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to uh, listen. I'm going to get about the headline out here, and then the music's going to start. We went so long. I got so wound up on my last diatribe. <laughs> I'm going to run out of time, run out of time on this, uh, this segment. But I'll tell you what we're going to talk about in the next hour. I'll go ahead and give you the headline. Trump asked the Supreme Court to extend delay in election case claiming presidential immunity. And if you didn't know, we'll bring, bring it back up in the next hour. Matt Crow may have got to it. I didn't get to listen to his show Thursday and Friday, but there was a Supreme Court argument made over the Colorado case. Supreme Court took an interesting turn on it. 
and didn't talk about or really question whether it was an insurrection. And I wanted them to take that up. I wanted the Supreme Court to say, we don't find this is an insurrection. And I've got so many more comments, but I don't want to get wound up on it because the music's about to start. It's about to tell us that it's uh, time for news and weather. So anyway, we'll talk about that. Uh, Trump uh, Trump um, asking for an extended delay in the election case in the Colorado Supreme Court case. Your text, more, anything you want to talk about, shoot me a text at 806-680-2790. This is the Chad Hasty Show right here on the Texas Town Square Media Network. Hour two of the program coming back after news and weather. I'm Steve Evans. Stick around. Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Filling in today for Chad Hasty, it's firearms enthusiast Steve Evans. Welcome back to Hour 2 of the Chad Hasty Show. Steve Evans hanging out with you, 806-680-2790. I'd like to send a message, 786. says, America the Beautiful has been used to introduce the national anthem. It's a beautiful song that clearly identifies our country, too. I agree. It's a beautiful song. I'm not sure what the caller, the message was. I don't. I, sometimes people just catch snippets of what I say. They don't catch the whole thing. And, and get wound up, and then there's there's a text, and so we have to clarify. I appreciate it, though. appreciate the opportunity to clarify. Because if somebody took it wrong, I want to clarify, right? <laughs> I want you to understand what I meant. Well, that's Steve. He's all for the, this Black National Anthem. I, I don't, I, I'm not honestly sure that I've even ever heard it. I don't think I have. I've heard it talked about. I've never gone out and looked for it. I don't recognize it as a national anthem, so I've never gone and looked for it. And apparently, from what I can tell, it was played, but I guess it was played in like some sort of pre-show, and I didn't watch the pregame. I don't know if they aired it. They may have. If you know, shoot me a message, 806-680-2790. I don't know. I just don't, uh, I just ignore it. And then it just goes away, right? Like the monsters under the bed, you just ignore them and they go away. Oh, so I was looking at, uh, th- there's, of course, at a Supreme Court argument, there's there's always scarce details until the opinion comes out. But uh, I, I went over to CBS. Don't, don't uh, roast me on the text. You're looking at anything but Fox News or the Texan or something like that. You're wrong. No, there's, there's other news sources out there that can pick up things. But I found one here. There's a, there's a couple. There's a SCOTUS blog that I kind of watch and then uh, looking at the, uh, the CBS article that's the five key takeaways. And, of course, Jonathan Mitchell uh, was who argued on behalf of Trump. You remember his name? He is the, he's the one that uh, was he the solicitor, solicitor general for, for the state of Texas at one time, but he's argued plenty of Supreme Court cases and Texas Supreme Court cases. He was also the attorney that uh, has been heavily involved in the Sanctuary City for the Unborn Ordinances and has offered to cities and municipalities um he's offered to defend them and if they get sued for passing those ordinances it's been pivotal in that so on thursday the supreme court heard the oral arguments in the blockbuster case 
over whether uh, former President Donald Trump can be excluded from the, the Colorado primary ballot over his actions surrounding the attack. I like how they use the word attack. I use the word riot and peaceful protest, often protest. Uh, on January 6th, there's so many outlets are just already using the word insurrection because it goes with their narrative. They want to call Donald Trump an insurrectionist, so they just use the they use the, the the rhetoric insurrection on January 6th. Irritates me. Case hinges on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which bars officials who sworn to support the Constitution from serving in government if they engage in insurrection. Seems to me that becomes criminal, doesn't it? Doesn't, doesn't there have to be some due process before you're labeled an insurrectionist? Not just Nancy Pelosi deciding you are. The provision was enacted in 1868 to prevent former Confederates from holding office and laid mostly dormant for more than 150 years. A group of voters in Colorado challenged Trump's eligibility for White House, citing January 6th. A divided Colorado Supreme Court ruled in December that Section 3 meant Trump was ineligible for office and thus could not appear on the state's primary election ballot. They knew it was going to go to the, to the U.S. Supreme Court. They paused the ruling, this is how, so Trump could appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, knowing that he would. There's a clock on this. As, as voting starts, you got to get you got to get mail ballots out. You got to get military ballots out. Once those are out, if they were to exclude all of those ballots because they decided he couldn't appear, can you imagine the mess? Oh my goodness! Again, we're a party of law and rules and order. During oral arguments in the case known as Trump versus Anderson, lawyers from both sides and Colorado Secretary of State laid out their positions before the high court. Many of the justices seemed skeptical of the idea that states could enforce Section 3 like Colorado did and appeared poised to let Trump remain on the ballot. Five key takeaways. An exchange between Chief Justice John Roberts and Jason Murray, a Colorado attorney appearing on behalf of the voters who brought the case, seemed to encapsulate the justice concern with upholding the Colorado ruling. The whole point of the 14th Amendment was to restrict state power, Roberts said. On the other hand, it augmented federal power under Section 5. Congress has the power to enforce it. So wouldn't that be the last place you'd look for authorization for the states, including Confederate states, to enforce Implicity uh, authorized to enforce the presidential election process. This seems to be a position that is at war with the whole thrust of the 14th Amendment and, and very ahistorical. Murray also pointed to Article 2 of the Constitution saying it gives states broad power to run their elections. Robert countered that the narrow power you're looking for is the power of disqualification, Correct. That is a very specific power in the 14th Amendment, and you're saying it was implicitly extended to the states under a clause that doesn't address that at all. They were, I mean, they knew. They were blowing holes in the argument, and they do that. They will engage. You hope they do. The Chief Justice warned that a ruling finding states can enforce Section 3 on their own would open a door to a partisan tit-for-tat that would place the presidential election in the hands of a narrow sliver of states. That's what they want. If Colorado's position is upheld, surely there will be disqualification proceedings on the other side, and some of those will succeed. I would expect that a goodly number of states will say, whoever the Democrat candidate is, you're off the ballot. And others, for the Republican candidate, you're off the ballot. It'll come down to just a handful of states that are going to decide the presidential election. That's a daunting consequence. Murray replied, the fact that there are potential frivolous application of a, precision, of a provision is not a reason. Well, no, hold on. You might think they're frivolous. I like the Roberts. You might think they're frivolous, but the people who are bringing them may not think they are frivolous. Insurrection is a broad term. And if there's some debate about it, I suppose that will go into the decision. And then eventually what we will be deciding is whether there was an insurrection when one president did something as opposed to when somebody else did something. Or did something else. And what do we do? Do we wait until near the time of counting ballots and kind of go through which states are valid and which aren't? There's a Murray counter. There's a reason Section 3 has been dormant for 150 years is because we haven't seen anything like 
January 6th since re- re- Reconstruction. Again, they use insurrection. Insurrection against the Constitution is something extraordinary. His response prompted Roberts to remark that he was avoiding the question. Though it was Trump's conduct surrounding the January 6th, I'm going to use riot, <laughs> peaceful protest, assault on the U.S. Capitol that led to the Colorado Supreme Court to deem him ineligible under Section 3. Little time during the two hours of arguments was devoted to the attack and whether Trump incited a mob of his supporters uh, as the voters allege. Jonathan Mitchell, the Texas-based lawyer who argued on behalf of Trump, denied that the events of January 6th constituted an insurrection. If anything, we saw tragedy during that. You remember the combat vet that got shot through the window of the door, got shot through the door and killed? And the officer that did it was labeled a hero, I believe given even a medal, said we were backed up, we had nowhere to go. They were coming through the door, we had to defend it. What did they think was going to happen? Jonathan Mitchell says, for an insurrection, there needs to be an organized, concerted effort to overthrow the government of the United States through violence. This was a riot, not an insurrection. The events were shameful, criminal, violent, all of those things, but they did not qualify as an insurrection, as that term is used in Section 3. Justice Kavanaugh noted that Congress has enacted a mechanism to prohibit insurrectionists from holding office, the Insurrection Act, which was passed decades before the 14th Amendment was ratified in 1868. That tool exists, you agree, and could be used against someone who committed insurrection, he told Murray. While Trump is being criminally prosecuted for his alleged effort to subvert the transfer of power after the 2020 presidential election, he is not charged with violating the Insurrection Act. Where's the due process? The former president has pleaded not guilty to the four charges brought against him by special counsel Jack Smith. The main argument advanced by Trump lawyers is that Section 3 does not apply to him as a former president, nor to the office of the presidency which he is seeking. Their position rests on two phrases in the clause, office under the United States and not officer, and officer of the United States. Neither the president nor the presidency should be covered by those two phrases, Mitchell argued. He also asserted in court filings that the presidential oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution is different from an oath to support it, which is the oath described in Section 3. You have a list. and The president is not on it, Justice uh, Jackson told Mitchell. She raised a similar point later to Murray, questioning why the drafters of Section 3 did not put the word president in the very enumerated list in Section 3 acknowledging that the text of the provision may be ambiguous as to whether it covers the president and presidency. Jackson questioned, why would we construe it against democracy? Jackson later said the history of the 14th Amendment provides the reason for why the presidency may not be covered by Section 3. The pressing concern, as least as I see the historical record, was actually what was going on at lower levels of the government. The possible infiltration and embedding of insurrectionists into state government apparatus and the real risk that former Confederates might return to power in the South via state-level elections, either in local offices or representatives of the states in Congress, she told Mitchell. And that's a very different lens. This is very good for Donald Trump. This is very good for the insurrection argument. We need to take a break here, don't we, Nick? Let's go ahead and take it. Take a break right quick. I'll follow, uh, finish up this article after the break and more. Your text coming up after the break, 806-680-2790. Steve Evans in for Chad Hasty back in a moment. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock, News Talk 940 in Amarillo, News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene, and in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. 
Coming up on the Tuesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show, cleanup on aisle Biden continues the Democrat media trying to convince you that Biden isn't too old for the job. Plus, Clay? We'll continue to count down a little bit over nine months away. Is Biden actually going to be the guy as all of Buck's brains are getting scrambled? Michelle Obama talk continues. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, tomorrow morning at 11. Hey, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show, 806-680-2790. Before I get back to my Supreme Court article, a couple of texts, let's catch up on 831. The song America the Beautiful is a great song. He just did a bad rendering. <laughs> I'm going to go back and listen to it now. Was it that bad? It's a beautiful song. It's hard to mess it up. 543 said the song was played pre-show. The first song was Lift Every Voice and Sing. I looked up on Google what was the black anthem, and it said lift every voice and sing. So you didn't know either going into it. I mean, I didn't. 791, Mark in California. Some former Confederates got government positions, Longstreet being one of them. And who was the former Confederate who got a general's commission during the Spanish-American War? Thank you for that. I've lost my place because I scrolled. (laughs) A terrible mistake. Ugh. Justice Jackson told Mitchell, you have a list. President's not on it. Uh, Let's see. Jackson later said the history of the 14th Amendment provides the reason for why the presidency may not be covered by Section 3. The pressing concern, at least as I see the historical record, was actually what was going on at lower levels of the government, the possible infiltration. Let's see, I got to that. Um, That's what they were concerned about, what the texture just said getting into low level of government, then moving into Congress. The voters that argued in filings, Trump's argument amounts to a loophole available only to him because he did not serve in public office before winning the White House in 2016. He's the only former president besides George Washington who, was, who had never before sworn an oath to support the Constitution. At the time this occurred, he had. Justice Sotomayor told... Mitchell told Justice Sotomayor that his argument uh, that the president is excluded from the phrase officer of the United States is the stronger one, though she pushed back a bit of gerrymandered rule, (laughs) isn't it? Designed to benefit only your client, she said. She continued, just so we're clear, under the reading, only the petitioner is disqualified because virtually every other president except Washington has taken an oath to support the Constitution, correct? Correct. One of the most dominant lines of questioning from the justices involved whether Section 3 is self-executing. Well, that was a rookie move. Didn't, didn't silence my phone. Thanks, Nick. Reminded me. <laughs> it's easy to blame him. <laughs> He's looking at me. I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, one of the most dominant lines of questioning from justices involved whether Section 3 is self-executing or whether it requires legislation from Congress to be enforced. This is key. Listen to this. Trump's lawyers pointed to a 1969 decision from Chief Justice Salmon Chase in a case involving a criminal defendant named Cesar Griffin. Cesar Griffin. Chase's opinion is considered the first major judicial opinion on Section 3, and it has determined that the provision was not self-executing and could not be only be enforced uh, and could only be enforced through an act of Congress. There's precedent, and it goes back to 1869. We don't use this. This doesn't happen. Chase was sitting as a circuit court judge in Virginia at the time he issued his opinion. So it's so it is not Supreme Court precedent, but it's precedent. He also reached the opposite conclusion in the treason prosecution against Jefferson Davis, the former president of the Confederacy, serving as circuit judge in that instance as well. Chase said he agreed with Davis's lawyers that Section Three executes itself. Kavanaugh argued that Chase's opinion in the Griffin case is still relevant for determining the original meaning of Section 3. See, they're going back on whether Trump can, whether this can just be determined. And still, again, due process. We keep going back to that, due process. Does Congress have to act? If not, who determines whether it's insurrection? 
do the Supreme Court justices, and this I think is probably the reason they didn't, they talked about it a lot, but they largely stayed away with it. I don't think their opinion, I, I, listen, I hope it does. I hope their opinion is is definitive enough to say this is an insurrection. I bet it's not, though. I bet it's more along the lines is we don't have the vessel to determine if it is or it isn't because Congress hasn't acted, and it'll be very important in that ruling if that's the way they go because their opinion will be that Congress has to act for any future acts of insurrection, that it has to be a trigger mechanism, that it's not self-serving. It's by the Chief Justice of the United States a year after the 14th Amendment, he said, that seems to me highly probative of what the meaning or understanding of the language, otherwise elusive language, is. Kavanaugh later said it could be argued that Griffin's case is a reason why Section 3 has been so seldom used. Until the Colorado Supreme Court ruling, it had never been used to disqualify a presidential candidate. The reason it's been dormant is because there's been a settled understanding that Chief Justice Chase, even if not right in every detail, was essentially right, and the branches of the government have acted under that settled understanding for 155 years. Robert's concerns about states having the power to decide, and this is, this is the key part of it, to states having the power to decide whether a candidate is ineligible under Section 3 were echoed by his colleagues on the conservative and liberal wings of the bench. They're all nervous about it. Justice Kagan, one of the court's three liberal members, seemed to offer a path for justices to reach consensus in a pair of exchanges with Murray, maybe put most boldly. I think that the question that you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. In other words, this question of whether a former president is disqualified for insurrection to be president again is, you know, just say it. It sounds awfully national to me. So whatever means there are to enforce it would suggest that they have to be federal, national means. If you weren't from Colorado and you weren't from Wisconsin or you were from Michigan and what the Michigan Secretary of State did is going to make the difference between whether candidate A is elected or B is elected, that seems quite extraordinary, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going to end it there because we're right up against a break. But the interaction seems positive. We'll wait for the opinion. I don't know when it'll come out. I haven't seen anything that will hint when it will. But it's going to be a very, very important opinion, one that will shape the way we look at insurrection. It also may shape the way something that may cause it to happen again. I don't know. More to come on this. Your text and more when I get back. 806-680-2790. Time for news and weather. I'm Steve Evans right here on the Chad Hasty Show. Stick around. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays 5 to 7 p.m., Sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. Today's markets from the Texas Department of Ag. Well, howdy, neighbors. Texas feeder catalogs reported prices steady to 10 bucks higher. Texas Weekly Direct reported prices 3 to 7 higher. And cattle futures also up. February live cattle futures up 85 cents, close at 184.62. March feeder cattle futures up 30 cents to close at 247.15. March cotton futures up, closed at 91.78. March wheat futures were steady at 6.01 a bushel. March corn down four pennies, closed at 4.29. March soybean futures down a dime, closed at 11.84 bushel. And March soybean futures down 30 cents, closed at $346.80 per ton. February class B milk futures up a penny, closed at 16.13 a hundred. March crude oil futures up 62 to close at 76.84 a barrel. And the Dow Jones down 54 points. Closed at 38,671. And that's Market Roundup from the Texas Department of Agriculture. I'm your commissioner, Sid Miller. And remember, friends, Texas agriculture matters. Sold. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Don't you forget about Chad at Chad Hasty Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and on your radio. Now back to the Chad Hasty Show. Welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. Eight zero six six eight zero two seven ninety. Eric, the King of Hell Center, is it King Emperor? 
what do you go by, Eric? <laughs> I don't know. The Fuhrer? Oh, <laughs> that one stung. <laughs> you know, Steve, the Democrats haven't been happy since uh, the, we, the Republicans took away uh, their slaves. Ouch. I think uh, I just summed up why the Democrats walk around so hurt that they don't remember why. Uh, it's, it's more than that. It's more than that. It's a power thing. Uh, let's see. I think it was... Uh, Oh, this is going back to Mark in, in California. He said some former Confederates got government positions. Um, Confederate who got the commission during the Spanish-American War. I think it uh, was Fitzhugh Lee commanded the Rough Riders. I don't know. I, I have to look that up. I don't, I don't have that part of history committed to memory. Uh, 368, the shooter in Houston, was it a man or a woman? There's only one answer. Good grief. There, are, uh, There's only two choices in one answer. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the shooting at Joel Alstein's church. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I'm not even sure what, uh, what motivated it. 806-680-2790 if you want to get your thoughts in. Some more Donald J. Trump news. It's all happening now. And why this stuff is so important right now is because this is this this should be an indication of how scared the Democrats are of Donald J. Trump right now. They're terrified. That's why all this is happening. If they thought they could beat him, you wouldn't probably wouldn't see this. They're scared to death of him. They're so scared. I it, and it's it's everybody's starting to talk about it now. You're listening to Clay and Buck. All the national pundits are starting to talk about it. Michelle Obama elected at the convention by the DNC. It's a very real likelihood. How they'll do it and whether Biden will push back on it remains to be seen. But watch, they'll break their own rules because they are rule breakers. They don't care as long as they get what they want. And they're scared to death of him. That's why they're even looking at it because the Roomba in chief is not competent. And all of, the, all of the stuff that's starting to come out about calls for him to, to, to be tested, to see if he's, if he's competent. And I think the stuff's being released by the Democrats. You're going to start seeing those talking points. And it's the Democrats making a case against Joe Biden. That's what you're going to see. 773 says, I don't have any thoughts, but just wanted to text in and let you know. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Those do matter. <laughs> they matter, 773. I do appreciate them, even if you're just saying, hey, good evening. I like the ones that say, I love you, Steve. <laughs> those are Those are good. Nick likes the ones that say great sweater. He loves those. Let us know you're out there. Sometimes radio's lonely. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one-way communication unless you text in. We're just firing it out there in the airwaves, hoping somebody's catching the show. We know there's a lot of listeners. But sometimes you wonder. You have those days when there's just not a lot of feedback, not a lot of activity. You wonder if you're just out there talking to yourself. It's generally just me and Nick having a conversation. <laughs> but all this matters now because it's election time. So the big push to keep them off the ballot. It's not Republicans necessarily trying to keep them off the ballot. It's Democrats. Why are Democrats so vested in keeping a Republican candidate off a Republican ballot? That's our nominee. Because they're afraid of him. He's going to win the Republican nomination. There's not going to be some weird thing that puts Nikki Haley on the ballot. It's just not going to happen. They're trying. It's not going to happen. Trump's going to win the nomination. Everybody would like, well, I say everybody, everybody that opposed him would like to think it's not going to happen. They're going to tell you it's not going to happen. They're going to put their, their I mean, the Democrats are supporting Nikki Haley, too. Here's your good alternative for when we decide he's a criminal. <laughs> 773 says, I love you, Steve. <laughs> that could be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. I am flattered. But this is important right now. It's timely. So Trump's asked the Supreme Court to extend a delay in election case claiming presidential immunity. 
He's asking them to extend the delay in the trial stemming from special counsel Jack Smith's 2020 election interference case, arguing that he has presidential immunity to protect him from prosecution. The Supreme Court arguments go, that, that went on Thursday that I talked about are likely to weigh on this because they are, they are arguing whether... Well, they're arguing the insurrection clause. I just had a thought there. They're not arguing this necessarily, but it will weigh. They're arguing that he has presidential immunity to protect him from prosecution. Trump attorneys um, today, uh, this afternoon, filed an emergency appeal with the Supreme Court just days after the D.C. appeals court ruled that former presidential and 24 GOP frontrunner is not immune from prosecution in Smith's case. The quest is for temporary relief to stay or block the appeals court mandate from taking effect, which would give Trump legal team give tr- the Trump legal team more time to file an appeal to the Supreme Court on the merits of whether a former president deserves immunity from criminal prosecution for actions while in office. It's unprecedented. The trial stemming from Smith's case against Trump is on hold pending the resolution of the immunity question. The Justice Department may ask for expedited consideration of this initial emergency appeal, and they're doing it because they want to disqualify him and pull the, na- the, the Nikki Haley pin on, the, on that grenade. That's what they want. The Democrats are doing this again. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. If the prosecution of a president is upheld, such prosecutions will recur and become increasingly common, ushering in destructive cycles of recrimination. The request, uh, the request states, criminal prosecution, which is greater stigma and more severe penalties, imposes a far greater personal vulnerability on the president than any civil penalty. The request adds, the threat of future criminal prosecution by a politically opposed administration will overshadow every future presidential, uh, president's official acts, especially the most politically controversial decisions. The request state the president's political opponents will seek to influence and control his or her decisions via effective extortion or blackmail with the threat, explicit or implicit, of indictment by a future hostile administration for acts that don't warrant any such prosecution. Witch hunt. This threat will hang like a milestone around every future president's neck, distorting presidential decision-making, undermining the president's independence, and clouding the president's ability to deal fearlessly and and impartially with the duties of his office. Can you imagine? He's got to keep his attorney on speed dial every time he goes to open his mouth. Am I going to be indicted for this later? Trump's lawyers added, without immunity from criminal prosecution, the presidency as we know it will cease to exist as long as it's a Republican in office. The Democrats, they won't do it to their own. Unless it's Joe Biden and they want to do it to him to kick him off their ballot. As President Trump's powerhouse Supreme Court filing explains, if immunity is not granted to a president, every future president who leaves office will face the prospect of being wrongfully indicted by the opposing party. Without complete immunity, the president of the United States will not be able to function properly. Even while he's in office, his political opponents will use the threat of future prosecution as a weapon. Can you imagine? Effectively blackmailing and extorting him. The following comes, let's see, that's rehashing it. Anyway, let's move on. (laughs) Let's move on. We'll take the break. Got a few texts to catch up and uh, we'll be back to wrap up the show. We come back from the break. Steve Evans, hanging out with you. A few minutes, I'll be back. I've been around for you, been up and down for you. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Tuesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show, cleanup on aisle Biden continues the Democrat media trying to convince you that Biden isn't too old for the job. Plus, Clay? We'll continue to count down a little bit over nine months away. Is Biden actually going to be the guy as all of Buck's brains are getting scrambled? Michelle Obama talk continues. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Tomorrow morning at 11. We live Texas, we breathe Texas. The landmarks, the swagger, and the lore make us who we are. We devour the tastes and the smells of our state. You just might say there's something in the air. So do your part to help protect it. Keep your tires at the correct pressure and avoid idling at drive-thrus. 
Both help reduce emissions. For tips, visit drivecleantexas.org. Drive Clean Texas. Live and breathe it. Brought to you by TexDot. Travis, Buck Sexton, and Sean Hannity. Weekdays on KFYO. Hey, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. 806-680-2790. Steve Evans hanging out with you as we wrap up the show. We'll be back uh, tomorrow as Chad uh, tries to get home. I'm just assuming he's going to be able to get home. Not completely full flights all day long. Checking in on that text line, 392 says, A report on Biden gives Dems a way out. I know they've been looking for anything, and now they have it. Of course. That's the plan. I really think it's Michelle Obama. I'll be shocked if it's not. 268 says, Allen and uh, Abilene says, They stole the nomination from Bernie. Why wouldn't they steal it from Joe? Well, sure they did. They're not law-abiding and law-abiding or rule-abiding party. 470 says, Kamala said today that she's ready to serve. Maybe there's talk behind closed doors to get him to bow out before the 25th Amendment is put into action. That's an interesting, interesting thought. Will they try the 20, 25th Amendment angle? When will they try it? They almost need to do it before the Democratic National Convention, before they nominate somebody. They almost need to do it then. We'll wait right up until that minute, then then trigger it. But a Republican's going to do that? The Republican House going to go along with that? Surely the Republican House, Republican Congress, is, isn't going to play in to the Democrats' plan. We want the weakest person we can get on the ticket. It's what they would do to us. There could be talks about Kamala Harris. How frightening is that? But put her on the ballot. 786, I enjoy uh, radio shows that make us think about what and why we believe in what we do. Your first segment to, in today's show did that. Appreciate uh, what, uh, whenever you sub in. Thank you very much. Listen, you're not always going to agree with me. I'm not always going to do the things that everybody thinks is popular. But what I can tell you is, as long as I hold any type of elected position either in the party or or future. One day I want to go to the Texas House. One day. I've always thought about it. I don't know if I have time. And looking at, you know, looking at at uh, this last multiple session, I don't know that I could afford it, honestly. I need to make money, too. But as long as I serve the great people of, of my Senate district, as your state Republican executive committee man, or whatever else, I'm going to to look at it as what are the rules and the laws that bind us say? Because we have to honor that first. Or, or who are we? We might as well be the Democrat Party. I'm just not willing to compromise the rule of law. It doesn't make sense to me. We've got to have our morals, our ethics, our values... That's what makes us who we are. Does someone want to get on, Nick? Just throw them on real quick. I don't even know who this is, but you're on the Chad Hasty Show. We just got a couple minutes. Who is this? Hey, it's Mark in California. I sent a text earlier. Hey, Mark. How are you? Thanks for calling. Just got a couple no, minutes. No, I felt bad. You just said nobody was contacting you. You weren't sure if you were talking to anybody. So I thought, well, I'll give him a quick call and say, hey, somebody's listening. And all the way out <laughs> in California, too. Yeah, yeah, we, we had an exciting night last night. We had a few earthquakes. That was a little bit invigorating. So, uh, are you out in the part of the California that's still conservative, the little part? Yes, yes. Well, I'm actually an uh, interior state, so I'm a I'm about ten miles from the Mexican border, about fifty miles from Arizona, and uh, about 120 from San Diego. So the interior of the state is very conservative. So yeah, we're, there's a few of us out there. And no. I think out that area where, where the redwoods are, the big trees, that's kind of a conservative area too, isn't it? Yeah, although that's a quite a ways from me. <laughs> I live in the desert. 
<laughs> you're out in the middle of nowhere. You've got like a big massive antenna out there, like a prepper with you know all the communications. Listening to the Chad HD show. You know, fortunately, it's a, you know, uh, you know, good apps and stuff. We can make hit listen to good conservative radio. So anyway, I just, I think, but you know, real quick on the Trump thing. I mean, um, yeah, all being an all aside, I think the Supreme Court's easiest option out on this is that, you know, the man hasn't been convicted of a crime. And basically, insurrection is treason. So if you haven't convicted him of treason, then there's nothing you got. There's nothing any of this applies to. It's simply, that's their easiest way out. I mean, in my opinion. Well, it is, and it's. I mean, the thing is, is we're having to go back to the 1800s to even find any opinion or precedent on it because there isn't any. This was well, yeah, and there isn't any. And the fact that there was there were Confederates that got in the government. I mean, Longstreet was an ambassador. Fifty Lee was, I think, a a congressional member or a senator or maybe a judge, and he ended up getting a general's degree. I mean, it's so, it, it, you know, to say that they couldn't do it, they'd actually it happened, you know? So, but again, it's ridiculous to have to go back that far because it's just, the man hasn't convicted in the court of law. They can't prove he did it. There's no, it's just like, that's the end of it. That's, and that's the end game for the Supreme Court, but they're going to dance around and not want to go there. So, because Roberts is a chick. Yeah. <laughs> well, they hate us because they ain't us. Mark, thank you so much. I got to go. <laughs> thank you so much for calling in from California. Always good to hear. <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, I lost my train of thought, but thanks, Mark. Uh, anyway, as long as, uh, as long as I represent anyone in the listening area, <laughs> I'll continue to do what's right because I can sleep at night knowing I did what's right. That's the reason I'm in the party I'm in. Anyway, enjoyed being with you. Always do. Always good to, to fill in for Chad. I'm sure he'll have uh, Las Vegas tales when he comes back. I hope he hit it big on a slot machine. <laughs> but anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same station, wherever you listen to the Chad Hasty Show. This is the Chad Hasty Show on the Texas Town Square Media Network. Hope you have an absolute great evening. For Nick Chalshik, I'm Steve. We're out of here. See you. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media.